Hi everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Anaya and today we are set to uncover the story of Oppenheimer. In the early 20th century, Robert Oppenheimer grew up in a wealthy, intellectual family in New York City. Fascinated by science from a young age, he excelled academically and pursued a career in physics, studying at prestigious institutions like Harvard and Cambridge. His brilliance quickly earned him recognition, and by the 1930s, Oppenheimer had become a leading figure in theoretical physics. However, the world around him was in turmoil. As the 1930s progressed, fascism spread across Europe, and war loomed. When World War II broke out, and Nazi Germany began advancing its nuclear research, the US government feared they would build a bomb first. This led to the creation of the Manhattan Project, a top-secret program to develop an atomic bomb. In 1942, Oppenheimer was appointed as the scientific director of the project. He gathered the greatest minds in physics at Los Alamos, a remote site in New Mexico, to spearhead the development. The weight of this responsibility was immense. Scientists like Enrico Fermi, Richard Feynman, and Niels Bohr worked day and night under Oppenheimer's leadership to solve the engineering and scientific challenges that would lead to a functional nuclear weapon. For Oppenheimer, this period was both a triumph and a source of moral conflict. He understood the bomb's potential to end the war but also foresaw its devastating power. As the project neared completion, these concerns weighed heavily on him. On July 16, 1945, the first successful test of the atomic bomb occurred at the Trinity site in New Mexico. When Oppenheimer saw the explosion, he famously quoted the Bhagavad Gita, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds, reflecting his deep inner turmoil. Just weeks later, the US dropped two atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan, leading to Japan's surrender and the end of World War II. Although Oppenheimer was initially hailed as a national hero, he became increasingly conflicted about the use of nuclear weapons. He saw the bomb as a necessary evil to end the war, but he soon became a vocal advocate for arms control and warned against the nuclear arms race that was beginning with the Soviet Union. As the Cold War unfolded, Oppenheimer's earlier political affiliations and left-leaning views, particularly his connections to Communist Party members in the 1930s, came back to haunt him. He had never been a communist himself, but his associations were enough to draw suspicion. Tensions between Oppenheimer and other powerful figures, like Louis Strauss and Edward Teller, who supported more aggressive nuclear weapons development, led to a series of hearings. In 1954, Oppenheimer faced a humiliating security clearance hearing, orchestrated by his enemies in the government, where his loyalty to the United States was questioned. Despite his crucial role in the Manhattan Project, his security clearance was revoked, effectively ending his influence in U.S. nuclear policy. The hearings were a deeply public and personal defeat, portraying him as a tragic figure brought down by political paranoia and personal rivalries. In the years following, Oppenheimer retreated from public life, continuing his academic work but largely removed from the world of policy and government. He lived with the knowledge that his work had irrevocably changed the world, for better or worse. His philosophical reflections on his role in creating the atomic bomb and its consequences defined his later years. In 1967, Oppenheimer died of throat cancer, but his legacy as the father of the atomic bomb remains both celebrated and controversial. He is remembered not only for his contributions to science but also for the moral and ethical questions his life and work continue to raise. If you like the video subscribe the channel and smash the bell icon for more videos.